And joining us now with more from the political front is Orange County Register political reporter Peggy Lowe. Glad to have you on, Peggy. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Good to see you. You were at the uh, Orange County, the OC Forum, where uh, Morlock spoke, Chairman Morlock spoke. Um, it doesn't sound like it was great. I it mean, wasn't not, no that great, great news. He kept, no. say, he kept apologizing, yeah. actually, for saying, I'm offering all this depressive news. But um, to go back to the tape that David got, Morlock said that 80% of the county's revenue is coming from property tax. 80%. And with the housing market really going south here in Orange County, that's a really huge concern for many on the Board of Supervisors and people who are providing services for the county. Now, 80% seems high, but I don't know that much about other, other counties in California. Is that about status? Quo. He actually blames Schwarzenegger in part for this because he believes that when Governor Schwarzenegger came in and he was very popular, he could have changed a lot of these kinds of funding issues and financial issues and that he failed to do that. He also blamed Governor Schwarzenegger today for a lack of movement on any of these public pension problems. You know, there's billions in unfunded liabilities of the, for the public pensions. Mm -hmm. And he was saying the governor's commission did nothing. Here in Orange County, they really are trying to cut back and they have done so. In other comments that he made about Governor Schwarzenegger, he said that they, uh, in Sacramento, were not fixing their economic house so that it was strong when it needed to be, and that in uh, times of... Uh uh, uh, good monetary uh, bottom lines, e even then we were spending more than we were actually bringing in. He had a little more to say to, about that at the OC Forum. We're going to take a listen real quick. Sacramento had a chance to pay off prior debts and set aside funds for the future, fix all the systemic budget problems that it's had for years, and it did not. It finished an upcycle with a $16 billion deficit. Okay, so <laughs> where do we go from here? Right, he's saying you know? they, if they finished at it with an up cycle, you know, with all that debt, what are they going to do after a down cycle? Right. I mean, the down cycle's coming. He said uh, trends are our friends, and we need to be looking at stuff like that, and we need to get these things in place to take care of ourselves financially. Okay. Anything else from the OC Forum that, that came out of there that uh, you really uh, thought was interesting? Well, what was what they mostly talked about was this community indicators report, which comes out every year, and it's just a, it's kind of like like the weather report for Orange County. Mm -hmm. And again, they went to the housing market again. They said, even as the housing market goes south, housing remains unaffordable for most people. Right. And particularly 25 to 30-year-olds, 30, 30 like people are, are moving away from Orange County and, and you know, creating their families um, outside of here sure. because they just can't afford housing. Inland Empire, uh, further, further afield than Orange County because right. you can't afford it. And homelessness as well. Homelessness was huge, and I thought this was um, absolutely amazing. Federal statistics that they cited in this report showed that 13,000, more than 13,000 kids from K through 12 are homeless or unstably housed. That's up 13 percent over 2006, and that's remarkable in a county that is so wealthy. Okay, but define homeless and unstably uh sound. I mean, the unstably house means like living in motels or living in their cars or, or something like that. And homeless is literally they homeless. A, they don't have a place to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go uh, to another topic that we cover a lot of here, uh, especially <laughs> when, when you're sitting here with us, and that's the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Uh, what's what's the latest? The latest is is interim uh, sheriff Jack Anderson is trying to get ahead of this uh, uh, grand jury report about the John Chamberlain murder at Theo Lacey. If you guys recall, it was this horrific murder. He was an inmate, and essentially the deputies might be implicated in some of this wrongdoing. So Jack really shook up the department late last Friday night. We got we were like four four thirty. He's already let go of two uh, assistant sheriffs who we believe were involved in some sort of investigation into what deputies did wrong that night at Theo Lacey in the John Chamberlain murder investigation. And then he named new people in charge again this week. So he's getting out in front of this grand jury report. Mm. Notice he has a civilian in this shakeup. Mm -hmm. Now, who is this and, and why? It's pretty interesting. He put a civilian in, in charge of uh, the administrative services that Joanne Galiski used to be in charge of. From what we understand, he's a financial whiz. He's much like Doug Storm, who uh, the former uh, captain who took care of financial services and did the budgeting before. But it's really kind of remarkable because he put a civilian in charge of a department that looks at uh, professional standards. Because, you know, all these cops and all these deputies have to go through all these series of tests to, to be a certified law guy. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be in charge of that, and that's kind of remarkable. Okay, uh, back to Joanne Galiski and Steve Bishop, um, who, as you said, this news came out 4.45 on Friday night <laughs> when all of us had already met our deadline exactly. and were, you know, and that, I'm we sure We were that, scrambling. Oh, absolutely. Um, 
And in the days that have passed now, though, any further information, uh, details about that? Here's what's fascinating. Tony Saavedra from our paper had a great get this morning. He had that Jack Anderson, by his own admission, knows what's coming out of that grand jury report because he was told within the grand jury room, so he's bound by secrecy, right. and with a meeting by DA Tony Rakakis. I think this is amazing. So this is why Anderson is getting out in front. He had the firings. He has the rearrangement at Theo Lacey, and he is getting ahead, like, spin-wise. Right. You know, to say, to get things in place before for what we hear will be a very critical report about mm. Orange County's jails. So Anderson's in full spin mode. Yes. All right, Peggy Lowe, thanks so much for joining us. We'll thanks, see you again. Pleasure.